These are the notes on Unit 7, uh, Lesson 4, um, Information Energy Transfer. So basically, if you go back and you remember way back when we tried to send a message versus a slinky, we did it as a class, and we tried to send the word... Uh, the number one and people like shook at one time and then you try to send the letter H and you went A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Oh, that's the eighth letter. So you had to shake it like eight times to send a letter. And we decided that was really complicated because first of all, you had to figure out if it was a letter or a number and how to count. Anyways, this is um, kind of where we went to. We said, oh, you need to have some sort of code, kind of like Morse code. And so that's what we're going to learn about is what is this code that computers use to take information, change it into a wave, send it to your cell phone, and then you get to hear the person on the other side, right? I mean, you guys do this every day, so it's trying to figure out how that works. So um, to send information digitally with cell phones, you need to use this thing called ASCII. Now, and that's what this, this word is right here. This is the word ASCII, which is a uh, binary code for letters. Now, I know this is really, really tiny on your screen, but the idea here, these are all different letters. So this letter up here, I believe, is an O, and then there's some digits, like ones and zeros. So this is like O, and it says one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, one. So that code, one, zero, one, one, zero one 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 that would tell the computer that's the letter o and there is a different eight digit code right ascii assigns an eight unique combination of ones and zeros right uh to different numbers and letters um if you look at all the ascii with eight bits because there's eight one two three four five six seven eight right there's eight over here um that you can make 256 different combos. You can capital letters, lowercase letter, le letters, numbers, punctuation, everything. So that's what computers use. They use ASCII. But we send the information via ones and zeros. So that's kind of what we need to understand. And then we have to see how we can convert it from ones and zeros back into something we as humans can understand. So here is an example. This picture right here shows you different types of information and how you can send it. So notice that the zeros and ones, see the zeros and ones up here? Those zeros and ones are digital. That's what we mean by digital. Ones and zeros are considered a digital signal as opposed to an analog signal, right? These are known as analog log, right, where it's not as precise, but it's close enough when we can have a computer change it into zeros and ones, and it's harder to lose the information. So ASC, which is this one right here, right, it says analog, see how it says analog and digital, but ASC, which is this one, AS, sorry, ASK, is amplitude. So amplitude, remember, is you know, going up and down, right? So this is my amplitude, right? How high it goes. So if we look at that, we see how this has a big amplitude and right here has a small amplitude. So the small amplitude represents the zeros and the big amplitude represents the ones, right? So you can see that again, low, zero, high, one, low, 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 zero, 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 high, one. So we end up with this code, zero, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one. Anyways, that's our ASCII code, right? That uh, will be transferred, well, the binary will be transferred into ASCII, but that's for the amplitude one, right? Um, let me erase that because that's a little messy. So let's erase this part so we can see everything again. And then let's look at the other one which is we'll do green, which is frequency. Oops, I want it to be that kind of green. Green. Uh, frequency modulated. So that's this one, which is FSK. So remember, it can be squished together and it can be spread apart. So this has a small wavelength and a high frequency, and this has a big wavelength and a low frequency. So you can see right here, this is a low frequency, so there are my zeros. And this is a high frequency, so those are my ones, right? And so you can see it again, high, 
low, high. So you have to understand when it's a high frequency and when it's a low frequency. Now, if I wanted to do this with sound, let me give you an example with my uh, toolbox generator that I can make sounds of different frequencies. So let me play this. So there's one frequency, that'd be kind of a high frequency, and then I can move it down. There's a low frequency. High, higher frequency. So maybe if I wanted to send a zero, this would be my zero. This would be my one, and then zero. So if I was looking at this frequency modulated one, it starts low, so I go low, right? And then, oops, that was my volume, sorry. I would go low, and then I would go low, and then I go high, and then I go high, and then I go low, and then I go high, and then I go low, and then I go high. Now notice sometimes it's three lows together, so somehow you have to distinguish between it. So look, I can change the type of wave it is. So maybe if I want to send, uh, here's my low, I want to send two lows, two zeros, so I go zero, and I change the wave. Then so that's like a, just an in-between, and then there's another low. And then I change it, but now I need to go a one, so I go up, and then we know that that's a one, right? So you have to have a way to do that. Now, if I wanted to do it as amplitude modulated, so I wanted to do it this way, then I would change it by sound. So here I am doing it by sound, so um, by the, the loudness of it. So here's my, here's my high, here's my low. Here's my high, here's my low. I don't know if you can tell as much on yours. Here's low, high, low, high, low, high, right? And again, I could change it and then change it back to this and then go high, right? So you have to be able to tell the difference between high and low. Now, if I wanted to do colors, then a high amplitude color would be bright, and that would equal a one. And a low amplitude color would be dim, and that would be zero. Or if I wanted to do, that would be for amplitude, right? This ask one, which is the same as this one, right? And if on the other hand, I wanted to do frequency modulated, then I could have, so remember the colors go Roy G Biv. So this is a higher frequency, and this is a lower frequency. You need to know that. So if I did red and blue, red would equal high. Sorry, red would not equal high. Red would equal low frequency, and blue would equal a high frequency. So let's erase this so it doesn't look quite so messy. So if I was looking at the frequency... The frequency modulated one, which remember, frequency modulated is this one. Then this record, this one over here, this would be red, red, blue, blue, red, blue, red, 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 blue, red. And when I saw the red, I know that's zero. So every time I see a red, I know it's zero. And every time I see a blue, I know it's one. So that's the concept, right? kind of hard, but we will get it. We will get it. You got to practice because you're going to actually have to use that concept next week for the engineering task. So here's my quick check question. Which of these is AM and which is FM? Before I give you the answer, I want you to think about it yourself. I know I can't pull you and I can't raise your, have you raise your hands, but I want you to look at the picture. These are representing waves. Which one is amplitude? Think amplitude goes this way and frequency goes that way, right? So can you see that this one is AM because it's getting big and small and big and small. And this one is FM because it's tiny and then it's big and then it's tiny and then it's big, right? So you have to understand the difference. This is FM. So between AM and FM. Okay, so the idea with binary code is... It represents, and I've kind of said this, but I just want to make sure it's making sense. It represents text, computer, processor, instructions, or other data using only two symbols, right? It's only ones and zeros. So that is 
all computers only understand ones and zeros. That's all they know. If you want to bring it down even one more level, then it's looking at pits and bumps. That's all it knows. It knows nothing else. It doesn't know a letter. It's stupid. The computer is really pretty stupid. You're very, very smart. But all it can understand is a one or a zero, and then just puts them together in combinations to make it make sense. And so then the binary code is assigned to some sort of pattern and that pattern represents a character instruction or something for the computer to do so the computer understands uh, what it's doing. So let's do some practice of coding binary um, uh, code, right? So it's pretty simple once you get the idea. Um, and there are some sample problems to go along with this to help you. Now, you guys understand decimal, right? Decimal is what you do all the time in your math class. And so you want to think of it as, so when we're in decimals, it's, it's base 10, right? This is base 10. And this is base 2, binary 2. It's zeros and ones. But this is like... 10 to the 0, and then 10 to the 1. This one's 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, etc. So this is base 2, this is base 10. So notice right here, 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1st, 10 to the 2nd, 10 to the 3rd, 10 to the 4th, right? 10 to the 0 is 1. 10 to the 1st is 10. So we just multiply it out. So that's 10, that's 1. 10 to the uh, second is 10 times 10, right? And so that's 100. And then this is 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10 to the third, right? Which is 1,000. And then 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, right? We get 10,000. When we're dealing with the binary system, it's 2 to the zero, 2 to the first, 2 to the second, 2 to the third, 2 to the fourth. So 2 to the zero is 1, just like before. But 2 to the 1st is 2 times 1, which is 2. And 2 to the 2nd is 2 times 2, which is 4. And 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. And you can keep going, right? Because remember, we're supposed to have 8 bits. And this is 1, 2, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'd go to the next power, 2 to the 5th, so it would be 16 times 2, so it would be 32, and then it would be 64, and then it would be 128. So we can keep going, right, with our table if we wanted to. We're not going to, um, to get all the way out to the 8th digit. Um, but we're just going this minute, just so you get the idea. So let's look at the first example. So it says 127. So notice the example's done fourth. I always start from this side when I'm dealing with decimals because that makes sense. So there are how many, how many ones? There are seven ones. There are how many tens? There are two tens. And there are how many one hundreds? One, one hundred. But there's no thousands and there's no ten thousands, right? So... Um, I want you right now to try to fill in some of these on your own. So pause the video and try it on your own before I go through the answers. All right, so hopefully you paused it and you tried your own. Um, I'm going to erase my very messy, messy table right here so that we can read it a little better. All right, so let's see if we can do the other ones. So if I look at this example, right, there are no ten thousands, no thousands, no one hundreds, no tens, and seven ones. In this one, there are no ten thousands, no thousands, no a hundred, seven tens, and seven ones. Super easy, right? This one, there's one ten that one ten thousand, no one thousands, seven one hundreds, seven tens, and seven ones. Super simple. Right, let me erase over here so we can have some space to write. All right, so now, oops, right there. So now let's try this one. So we, again, we start over here on this side, right? So there are no 16s and 11, right? Because that's not big enough, so there's none of those. But there is an 8 in there, right? Oops, I was about to put eight. There's one eight. There can only be one of each of these. There can never be. It's either one or zero, right? So there's one eight. So then what I do is I do my math. I say 11 minus eight, and I go, okay, that's three. 
All right, so there was one of those. There are no fours, right? Because I can't subtract four from this, right? So there's none of those, but I can subtract two. So then I can do minus two, so one, two. And then this means one, so there's one, one, minus one is zero. So I got them all. So it's zero, one, zero, one, one. And then let's try the 31. Um, and so the 30... I didn't do the sample up here with you. So um, for this one, notice that there's only, there's no 16s, no 8s, no 4s, no 2s, and there's one 1. So again, pause the video and see if you can do that last one by yourself. Okay, so let's come back and let's look at the 21. So the 21, if I erase over here, erase. Oh, I can't. It won't let me erase that anymore. Oh, well. Um, so for the 21, um, notice that I can do 21 minus 16, right? That's why there's one of those, right? There's one of those. So uh, 21 minus 16 is, oh my goodness, make sure I do this right. 21 minus 16 is 5. So there are no 8s. There is a 4, so minus 4. That's why there's a 1 here for the 4, which gives me 1. And there's no 2s, right? And then there's 1, 1. So minus 1 equals 0. So it always has to end up being 0. And let's try this 31. See how you did on that one, right? So there is a 16 in there, right? So maybe I'll do it up here. So 31 minus 16. 31 minus 16 is 15. Right? So there's one of those. And then 15, is there an 8? Yes, there's an 8. I can subtract 8. So 15 minus 8 is 7. So I can put a 1 in there. Are there any 4s? Yes. So 7 minus 4 is 3. So there's one of those. And then there is a 2. So minus 2 is a 1. So there's one of those. Oh, there's still one of those. And that's 0. So this one is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Got it? So a nice, neat, completed table of this looks like that. But we just did it. But if you'd like to see it nice and neat, um, just make sure you understand. And then again, there are some more sample problems that we're going to do to practice that. Some of you have done this before, but some of you are still kind of like, what? But that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're going to figure it out next week. We're working on it some more. All right. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is this idea of the engineering task of where we are going. So do check out this um, app. That's what I was using to make my sounds with because you're going to have to be able to use something to be able to create digital signals. It could also be colors that you take with your phone. So you could take pictures of red and blue and use that. Um, and you are going to uh, need to, you're not doing this yet. We're going to do this next week. So we'll come back to this. I just want you thinking about it. So you need to figure this out. How are you going to do this? How are you going to change a three-letter word into digits? So we're going to learn how to do a spreadsheet that's going to do some of that for us. And then how will you use cell phones to send ones and zeros? So that's where you're going to need something like the tone generator or you're going to need um, visible light to be able to do it. And then you need to be able to change it back into ones and zeros to make a word. All right. Um, it does say you need to use an external speaker, but that's only if we were doing it out loud and I don't think we're gonna have to modify it slightly at which we will do next week but for now I just want you to think about how could you do that and I'm only going to require you to do it one way um, as opposed to two ways which we normally do because you have to do it on your own all right that's it for today